I'm in northeastern Ohio, and my owner, Pete Miller, has made me a heck of a deal on a tractor. He's got some big deer, too. You don't have to have a lot of fancy stuff to be a deer farmer, and this is living proof here. So this whole plant is run on nothing but hydraulics, no electricity. Oh, yeah. Wow. This is what he's done for, I believe, 41 years. My goodness. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Let her rip. Entering the war zone. You got all the food, all the water, no predators, and all the love that you can get them. It's pretty good compared to the wild. <laughs> this program is dedicated to the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces. May God bless America. Today's Americans are more disconnected with nature than any time in history. This disconnect has led to a society that is unaware of the importance of conservation of our natural resources. Fortunately, there are modern day heroes who are still in touch with nature and they work to protect wildlife and wildlife habitat for future generations. I guess I could have given it some throttle, huh? <laughs> Those stories are told here on Keith Warren's Deer and Wildlife Stories. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance, Schrade Knives, New Dart, the North American Deer Farmers Association, DNA Solutions and North American Deer Registry, Record Rack, Whitetail Sales and Service, Bad Boy Mowers and Multi-Terrain Vehicles, New Supercharged Scent Killer by Wildlife Research Center, and the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance Foundation. This is the first Amish deer farm I've ever been on. It's pretty neat. Uh, this one is owned by Pete Miller and his sons. Uh, they've got about 35 acres, 36 acres total. Mm -hmm. um, they are not here today on uh, camera because of their beliefs. Um, you'll see as we go around here today that uh, they've been able to adapt most of the modern technologies to fit their needs. I think it's important to say, to show this, that you don't have to have a lot of fancy stuff to be a deer farmer. And this is living proof here. This is ingenuity and love of the land, the love of nature that the Millers have. And uh, while lots of deer farmers, have, they're going for these big non-typical deer, not Pete. Okay, Pete and, and the Millers, tell them, tell them what they're trying to do. Their dream is to produce that nice, clean, typical rack. Um, they like the width, they like the mass, but they like the clean tines and the nice, clean, typical look. Well, let's go show them what it's going to look like. Uh, the bigger one of the two is Drifting Eagle. It's uh, Drifter's son. Uh, the smaller one is Trudeau. Uh, he's a two-year-old that we brought in Maxbo's son. For the four-year-old, the biggest one, is Milbo. Uh, he is a Maxbo son out of a Cardinal Charlie Doe Katie. Um, and the other wide rack is Renbo. That's a Milbo son, uh, two year old. This is basically a Kevin Grace system that has been modified to fit their needs. Okay, okay, so tell me about it. So you've got the scale right here. Well, this is basically, they don't have the powered augers coming in from the grain bins that you normally would see outside. They put the pre-mix feed upstairs in the barn, and then they come down when they're ready, they pull this lever. Mm -hmm. It'll fill based on the weight exactly how much they want. So this is gonna be like almost like a cement mixer for lack of a better description. Go around and around right. and around. And then when it's done mixing, you can open the, the gate, and they have the holding boxes. Look at here. It's a nice feeling feed, but how in the world do they power that thing? I mean, with no electricity. That's the biggest difference between this system and most of Kevin's systems. If you'll notice, there's no wires coming in. They run everything off uh, on the motor. Huh. Runs the whole thing. 
Well, how cool is that? this in? Well what this is, uh, this is an applicator. Uh, we use this to, app uh, to apply the permethian, which is oh, a fly apply. control. Yeah. Um, really? So the Amish do it this way instead of yeah, with, the, you know, a lot of times they have the big buggies. So no you, rangers, no four-wheelers. We're gonna do it the old-fashioned way with this. Well show me how to do it. Go ahead and get in the pack part of it. Wait, me? Yeah. You're gonna have to carry this around. Okay, I'll carry my weight. It gets lighter as you go though, so you'll work faster. <laughs> Okay, now what? We got the throttle over here to control the off switch. This is your to apply the chemicals right here. Gotcha. Uh, the chemical is not harmful. Uh, I'm you. familiar with it. All it does is kill flies, and the reason for killing the flies is because it takes the stress off the deer. And this is good exercise. All right, let it rip. I guess I could have given it some throttle, huh? I guess. <laughs> let her <Yeah>. rip. <laughs> The flies are more of an annoyance to the deer. Um, it's not that they're harming them in any way, it's just that they pester them all day. Um, with the application of the chemical, usually within an hour or two, those flies will start to disappear. That was a job well done. All right, well what thanks. What do you think about it? You know, I like it, and I'm gonna tell you all something. It, it, uh, Deer farming is one of those kind of things. It's a unique business. I mean, we were talking about that earlier. And that, and that deer farmers help each other. And how do you learn to deer farm? All you need to do is get a hold of deer farmers and we'll help you become a deer farmer. That's how. And there's a lot of work, but it's fun. A deer breeder's number one concern is the health of their animals. And that's not how big they are or anything else. It's the health of the animals. And although the flies really won't hurt them, it kind of stresses them out. And there's, there's a theory that the more stress an animal gets, the, well, it's like stress on humans. It affects their, uh, their personality. So they want to keep these animals as, as uh, little stress as possible. And in the Amish area, the, the thing that's neat about it is that the, you look down the lanes on the pens and there are no ruts where the rangers have gone back and forth or whatever and the vehicles back and forth because they're using the Ankle Express, which is kind of a cool deal. And uh, so anyway, the primary thing to do is be concerned about the stress of the animal. Coming up next on Deer and Wildlife Stories. So this is what Pete does for a real job? Yep. This is what he's done for, I believe, 41 years. My goodness. They're the most honest, hardworking, unbelievable people, I mean, and valued. And you ought to see some of the work they do. We'll be right back. So this is what Pete does for a real job? Yep. This is what he's done for, I believe, 41 years. My goodness. So this whole plant is run on nothing but hydraulics, Hydraulic no electricity. Power, yes. Wow. And you ought to see some of the work they do. Uh, Pete is the president of a hardwood flooring company, Shioga Hardwood Flooring here in uh, Middlefield. And Mervyn is in running the Marsh Valley Forest Products, which is an interior trim uh, custom molding uh, facility also here in Middlefield. Not one bit of electricity. Not one bit of electricity. That's cool. That's really cool. How does it make you feel to work with Amish people? Well, it makes me feel great because I, I know that they want an honest product for an honest dollar. They're the most honest, hardworking, unbelievable people, I mean, in value when you deal with them. No matter what, whether it's furniture or molding or deer, it's yeah. value. It's bottle feeding time. You'll notice these bottles, each one of them has a number on it. And that number corresponds to the number on the deer's ear tag. Also, uh, they have the same nipple. So every time the same fawn drinks have the same bottle with the same nipple, and Sam and I are going in there, we're entering the war zone. Oh, yeah. Come on. Come up here by this camera. Come say howdy. <laughs> Stay back. Stay back in there. This is cool, kind of like a tree house for deer lovers. 
This is the most unusual observation deck for whitetails I've ever seen. This this really is cool. I know you can you can get up here and, and observe them, but uh, if I were a deer farmer, I'd spend a lot of time up here just just loving looking at what I love. That's one of the most enjoyable parts of this is you start to grow bigger bucks. If you have something like this, you can get up in it and you don't disturb the animals at all. Well, once you're up here a couple of minutes, they forget you're here. I mean, what else could an animal want? They've got all the food, all the water, no predators, and all the love that you can give them. That's pretty good compared to the wild. <laughs> they actually started out here at Marsh Valley. I think they started out with about 15 acres and have built from there. Uh, they built that up to somewhere around 35 or 36 acres total. Um, and as you can see as we go through here, a lot of this land wouldn't have been very usable for anything else. The deer farming industry is, suits itself very nice for everyone, but it's really especially suited for the Amish religion. Um, they have all have a basic background with the animals, um, but they've been able to take this on farms that they can no longer use uh, an active farm to support their way of living and still be able to do something to produce some income for the family in a different, different sort of way. Um, it's not something that's suited just for the Amish, so just about anybody can get into it and do it. Uh, if you've got a love of animals and a uh, will to get out there and do some work, uh, you can get into deer farming. Uh, it's very exciting for the local people to have Keith come into town and uh, I know he got to meet several people around that uh, have been uh, viewers of his for a number of years. I think that they believe very strongly in what Keith has been doing with this program. Uh, they believe in the education um, that people can understand what it is that they're trying to do. Um, they have a strong passion for the whitetail um, and that grows each and every day and they'd love to get that message out to more people. Marsh Valley uh, produces a pretty strong line of genetics. They help to pass that on to new farmers um, and I think you'll find that deer farmers in general are very helpful in helping a new farmer get started. Um, if what, somebody was to have questions and they know of any deer farmer, I think you could probably approach them uh, and get some help and Marsh Valley uh, definitely fits that bill. Our joke around home is I've been a deer farmer for a year and a half and I'm in year six of a five year plan and uh, Pete has really helped to accelerate that plan for me. Very good. Coming up next on Deer and Wildlife Stories. Uh, this is the farm uh, today as it sits, or at least about a year and a half ago when this picture was taken. My family and I live here and uh, I feel like I've reacquired a part of my history. If you would like information on becoming a deer breeder, the North American Deer Farmers Association can help. Log on today. We'll be right back. Well, I, ha I have a, a deer farm per se. Uh, I have approximately 125 animals, uh, and we uh, have breeding stock, we have fawns, we have females, and uh, I earn a living off the land here raising deer. My deer farm is kind of special for me. Not only do I, do I love what I do, because it's, it's like I said, it's the marriage between outdoors, which I love, and agriculture, which I love. I, you know, I was, I was raised a farm kid. Um, and the, the farm that we're, we're on right now was owned by a, a, a family member back at the turn of the century. And um, as, as things go, it got sold out of the family. And uh, I was able to reacquire it uh, by using deer farming as my source of income here on the farm. And, and now my family and I live here and uh, I feel like I've reacquired a part of my history. It's, it's special to me because it's, it's allowed me to achieve something that uh, without deer farming, I don't know that I could have. I, I like the unique things in life. And, and you know, whenever we remodeled the home, we kept some of the the old things and obviously we updated some new things. When I, when I bought the place it had a 200 amp service and one receptacle in the basement. Uh, and uh, I don't want to call myself uh, pampered by any means, but that wasn't enough. <laughs> I didn't want to live that rough. And uh, my wife and I have remodeled the home and uh, it's, it's, it's beautiful now. Um, and it, it is special to, to me uh, knowing that 
some of my family members lived here, were raised here, they had their children here. Uh, and I acquired it because of deer farming. And so I, maybe I've taken the two greatest things in my life and put them together. Uh, but it, it's special to me and I'm, I'm thankful and I feel blessed every day. Uh, this is the farm uh, today as it sits, or at least about a year and a half ago when this picture was taken. And this is the, the picture of the house uh, at the turn of the century. And uh, back then, it was a, a Philip and Ormintha Dice. Uh, their this is their childhood home. Um, A.B. Dice, uh, uh, he owned three farms in a row between here and the mountains. We're, we're about five miles from the mountains, approximately. And uh, at that time period, uh, the Dice family owned, you could walk from here to the mountains and always be walking on Dice property. Um, but of course, over the years, uh, land gets sold off, it gets chopped up, uh, and uh, we lost a number of those farms. And I just thought it was really neat that I was able to reacquire this farm that used to be in the Dice name. Uh, and now I live here and I raise my family here and I have my deer farm here. And uh, I'm kind of proud of it. We had to grind out all the cracks, the stress fractures, and tape and mud them, and then skim coat all the walls and sand that down and then paint them. We put new ceilings in. Um, we had an electrician come in and help us with electrical and plumbing. It took just a lot of work, but at the same time, you, you appreciate it more when, when you do it together. And uh, we're awfully fond of it. Um, you know, Pennsylvania and Texas are the two biggest states in the country for deer farmers and uh, that, our particular industry, has given so much back. On a national scale, our economic impact is $3 billion a year. So if, if we can grow that and show the, the benefit to other states that currently do not have deer farming but get them to embrace it, I hope that in five years we can grow it into new, new areas and uh, grow the industry overall. Uh, and, I like to look at it, the industry, I think we're, my guys and girls that I represent across the country, they're, they're true conservationists, you know, they, they, they don't live it on the weekends, they live it every day. They submerse their families in it, um, they raise their families in it, and, and I, it, it, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity and I think if we can continue to grow it, uh, every person that comes to the farm, they absolutely love it and they want to come back. You know, um, and I hope that we can send that message and just continue to grow. Coming up next on Deer and Wildlife Stories. I know it's hard to believe, but some people believe that the world would be better off without man and that animals should be left to their own devices. There's no question humans can have a negative impact on nature. Urban sprawl and unchecked property development are proof of that. But we also do a lot of good. We'll be right back. This week's viewer email is brought to you by Bad Boy Mowers and Multi-Terrain Vehicles. Heather Baker is from Billings, Montana. Dear Keith in Montana, high fences are illegal. What can we do to promote your nature agri-park movement, though we cannot have high fences? Heather, high fences are not necessary to have a nature agri-park. What's necessary to have a nature agri-park is a big heart, that's all. Open up your land, whether it's high fence, low fence, no fence. Open up your land to those that don't get a chance to see nature and then start your own nature agri park. If you have a question for Keith, you can submit an email by logging on to keithwarren.net. Now a word from the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance in this week's conservation message. I know it's hard to believe, but some people believe that the world would be better off without man and that animals should be left to their own devices. There's no question humans can have a negative impact on nature. Urban sprawl and unchecked property development are proof of that. But we also do a lot of good. The fact is that Mother Nature can be cruel. Just ask any victim of Hurricane Katrina. Talk to a Texas farmer after months of drought conditions have turned their family's livelihood into blackened husks. Or witness a deer being eaten alive by a pack of coyotes. Habitat management and the stewardship of land is a serious issue for hunters and conservationists. Wise management helps and ensures that animals not only survive in a specified area, they thrive. 
Deer and other wildlife species require suitable and healthy habitats to maintain or increase their populations. Habitats provide food, cover, space, and water needs of animals, as well as native vegetation. Healthy wildlife and proper habitat management is the charge of every property owner. It's a responsibility that we all share. After all, if not man, what animal on this planet can step up? If you would like to know more about what the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance can do for the future of the outdoors, log on to DeerWildlifeAlliance.org. If you would like more information on today's featured operation, give them a call. If you would like to know more about the show and Keith Warren, log on to KeithWarren.net. Coming up next week on Deer and Wildlife Stories. 25 years ago, I started mainly as a hobby. More than anything, I just like really producing and raising really nice animals. Hey, you won't believe what I got Keith Warren doing. You know, I think those people from Oklahoma got it out for folks from Texas. For an interactive experience and to see last week's show in its entirety, visit our website.